Hey, y'all. Hey, y'all. Good evening and welcome to Faith in Politics. I'm really excited because I am online and trying to figure this all out together at one time because I'm finally live. I'm live everywhere that you listen to podcasting, actually. So I am live on um, Apple I'm live on Google. I'm live on Amazon. I'm live on iHeart. I'm live on Samsung. I'm live on Boomplay. I'm live on, I'm live on all kinds of stuff and I'm really excited about it. So we are growing right now, faith and politics. So I just want to encourage everyone to please, please share, please, please subscribe. Um, we're also on YouTube as well. So we are live on there as well. We're, we're live, live everywhere we can be live. And so as we grow, I just ask you to share this information. And so um, we can all grow together. And I'm trying to get my Instagram to go live right now, but y'all, it's kind of tripping. So give me two seconds to get that before I jump in. Um, but as I do this, I just, y'all, what is going on in the world? Well, we know what's going on in the world. And honestly, none of it should be surprising us if we are walking with the Lord and you are, oh, there it is. It's on the wrong Wi-Fi. That's why it wouldn't work. The devil is a liar. I was like, why is it tripping? Well, anyway, so there's so much going on in the world. And I hadn't really been on since the end of August. I think it was like August 31st. And the Lord was like, go on today. And I was like, uh, okay, God. So here we are coming on today. And I think I'm getting this. Oh, here we go. The Instagram is actually going to work. See how I told you the devil is a liar. Try not to get this to work. So I'm going to say the welcomes all over again in a second when they pop on. But okay, there we go. Um, welcome to Faith and Politics with me, Eileen. Uh, we are here live on Instagram. And for those who've been listening live on the other podcast channels, we're going to welcome all of our Instagram listeners right now. Um, we are growing and I'm really excited. Faith and Politics uh, is on every uh, platform that podcast platform that I could kind of think of. And so if you are a podcaster and you like uh, listening to podcasts while you drive or anything like that, I encourage you to start following me. Um, kind of just started it. Uh, but my old, Hey, Sean, um, but my old shows and stuff are actually on YouTube. Y'all it's funny. If you really want to hear me, I don't know how many people want to, but like I have shows from all the way from 2014, all the way on, um, on, uh, YouTube. So it's really funny, but I was kind of compelled, uh, to get on today by the Lord. Y'all already know my walk and how I do this. So it is what it is. And I was like, oh, okay, God, we're going to do this. And so I know I'm going to be getting on a lot more often, probably after the election, just because we need to like focus on that and then kind of go into our own stuff. But I just wanted to jump on here and let you know where the Lord was uh, kind of letting us know where we are, as well as politics. Because when I said, so if you're following me in the, um, in the subscription channel on uh, IG, then you'll know that I was coming on. I kind of drop, uh, those are kind of some people who get some behind the scenes information or like a revelation the Lord gives me or something like that. I might just go in there and let that group of people know it. I think there's like 48 people in there right now. So if you're interested in getting some like background information um, that the Lord may be giving, uh, please go subscribe there. But what the Lord has is going on right now. What I wanted to talk about was let it go. This is the season and this is what's going on. The Lord is telling us to let it go. Let the people go. Let the stuff go. Let the maybe the job, the your mom and them, your cousin, the, 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 the boyfriend, the girlfriend, you can't get over it. Whatever it is, it's time to let it go. We are moving forward. The Lord is like, uh-uh. And so I'm trying to give you like a short version of where we are so you can kind of understand. So I know if you've watched me from the last time I was explaining, like we're in Matthew 25, the separation of the wheat and the tear. Um, if you're if you um, know anything about uh, your faith, if you're Christian, that's honestly who I speak to. Um, that's who 
I'm here for. Um, but in addition to that, you know, people who want to listen and who want to understand, this is wonderful. We, we're here to share our faith. Um, so with that being said, the wheat and the tear grow up together and then at some, and then they look alike. And at some point the Lord separates them. And so that's what's happening right now in today's society. We are being separated. And when people think of separation, they don't necessarily think of it happening, like also in your family or also with your bestie that you've known since you were like younger. And then you're like, oh, I can't believe that I found this out about them. And then you realize that maybe the bestie that you thought was a bestie is really like a Judas because they've been jealous of you all this time and then kind of like took you for the okie doke. Well, a lot of people are having their aha moments right now and God is giving a lot of truth. He released the spirit of truth. Oh gosh, I want to say last year I got that message twice and God doesn't play about this type of stuff. So when he's like, he's releasing the spirit of truth, that's what you see going on all over the world, like literally all over the world. Great example, the Diddy stuff, spirit of truth is coming out. Why are all these people talking about the, the Lord, the Lord. And so that's just one example, but it's coming out everywhere. Like you had the, basically another version of Diddy come out in, um, Europe, he was the uh, the head of Amber Crombie and Fitch, and so the CEO, and so he just got uh, arrested and stuff for um, the all that stuff. Yeah, go look it up if you're interested. But that is what's going on. The Lord has really released truth, and so we're all getting it. And people just think it's going to be like in the news. No, it's down to like everyone's household. And so um, he is really encouraging us to dust our feet and to move forward because if you keep walking with these same people you're going to be stuck and when i say stuck like stuck like lot's wife when the lord said don't turn around don't turn around people are turning around so that's the problem so i encourage you to dust your feet to walk in your um your god-given authority right now the lord is really pressing upon us to understand who we are and if you don't um or have not been in your bible recently i encourage you to get in there um the lord loves us i i encourage you to to start with reading one of the uh one of the gospels because that's where you need to be right now you need to be walking with the lord you need to be um in your Bible and in your faith. And we need all of the believers, every Christian, everyone who believes in Jesus Christ to get your mind right right now and to get on the team because we are here to be in heaven's army. And it's so funny because, you know, people are like, I don't know what I'm here for. I don't know what my purpose is. And then you realize all these people, like when you're younger, you're like, all these people have these midlife cry. cry midlife crises and the, or they have these aha moments you know when they get a little older and we're like wondering what it is well guess what y'all i'm in my 40s <laughs> and i get it it's you've been fed bad information for so long and you start searching for the truth because you're like this can't be it and then you realize oh snap i'm literally in a spiritual war of good and evil like it really is what it really is and people don't want to accept that that's what we're living in but it really is what it is and so we have to be um uh we have to stand uh in our authority we got to walk in discernment and we have to test the spirits and we have to test everyone who comes in front of us and so with that being said this is faith and politics so i threw a little bit of the faith part in there for you right then and so i really wanted to press upon you this because you know just like everybody else is going through their their situations you know when god said he was uh jesus will come back he's like i didn't come back. i'm coming back with a sword i came to separate uh fathers from their sons and mothers from their daughters and and um in-laws from families this is what's happening this is the separation and holding on to um familial relationship, something that's just too familiar with you, but it's no, it's bad for you. It, you're going to end up like Lot's wife and Lot's wife doesn't even have a name in the Bible. She's just Lot's wife because she was disobedient. So the Lord is calling us into obedience and to do what we need to do so he can do what he needs to do. So kingdom can happen. So I gave you a little bit of the faith. Now I'm going to give you a little bit of the politics. So long story short, and it's kind of funny that I did not, um, plan to talk about this today, but it popped up um, in the news. And so I am fully compelled to talk about it because um, mm -mm -mm. 
Uh, for anyone who doesn't know, I was one of the um, persons who filed the recall for the city of New Orleans because um, we deserve better. We 100 and gazillion percent deserve better. And just with my walk with the Lord, I was able to see what was going on and what um, was really happening, as well as I worked in the administration for three years. I built the social media department for the city of New Orleans, and I walked next to the mayor for three years, literally. And so in that position, you kind of learn a lot, and you see a lot, and you recognize a lot. And there are things that are swayed due to communication and propaganda and the way that things want to be swayed because they make y'all want to see things in a certain light. Let me give you an example because this kind of aggravated me today with regards to the media and how the administration can flip a script on you so that the entire city is saying one thing and it sounds really good, but then you're like, people who know you can't change the dynamic of the media because they've already run with it because the administration has put out a, um, a, uh, 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 you know, a, a, a media, uh, push saying A, B, and C. And so that's what the media is going to parrot, but who is questioning the information they're putting out? Here's the example. Everybody in New Orleans is up in an uproar about homelessness, right? And how they are removing the encampment by the uh, post office and things like that. Now, with that being said, 100%, I am a believer in Jesus Christ and we absolutely need to take care of our homeless and our less fortunate in the city of New Orleans. My problem is that it took us six and a half years to do it. And then you wanna blame somebody else. So you've been over this, this situation for six and a half years and now that the governor is coming in, you wanna be like, oh, you're bad. He's helping us. The neighbors and the businesses in that area, I'm sure are appreciative because actually on WWL, there was a resident who was interviewed and he was like, actually, this encampment has started to grow. The rats are growing. The people are starting to defecate and use the bathroom in our neighborhoods and they're like stealing from us. So it's become a problem. And I'm glad that this is taking place because if you think about it, how long did we know that the Super Bowl was coming here? And actually it was supposed to come in 24. So it got pushed back to 25. So if you knew the, the Super Bowl was coming to your city for all these years, what have you been doing? But then when somebody wants to do something, you say something negative about them. We may not like everything he does, but I'm sure glad he's doing something because guess what? The crime has gone down. Thank you, Troop Nola. Because without the partnership with the state, I don't think we would be seeing the change in crime. And without the recall speaking up, I don't think we would even have a new police chief if you really want to go back to it. But I digress. So my point is how you can take a narrative and change it and say, hey, it's their fault. They're doing all of these nasty things.